me give this just a few seconds here. This is an unannounced live stream, so I'm just going to kind of come out real quick with this thing. Um, Unreal, I just found out about this. Um, if, you, if you're going to a church building, you need to run away quickly. Um, with all the stuff that happened during the last two years and how the churches just went completely along, did what the government told them to do, um, they are fully, wholly given over to Satan at this point in time. So we have here the power of Hello Guide for Houses of Worship, HOWs, now according to the, the government. And this is, uh, this is up here, you, can, you can't really see it too good, but CISA.gov. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Um, yeah, this is a government website. All right, this isn't conspiracy or whatever else. This is a government website. So let me just show you this real quick here. Um, promoting staff vigilance through the power of hello. Freedom of religion and the right to peaceably assemble are guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution and recognized as fundamental parts of American society. Maintaining their integrity is vital to sustaining the American way of life. These government goons, this, this is what they're doing all the time. We're very much for the constitutional rights that you have, and now we're going to explain why we have to take them from you. That's what they're doing. As demonstrated by tragic events across the country, terrorists and other violent extremist actors continue to attempt to disrupt the American democracy and still fear and or cause harm. Like sending out government things saying you have to train your, your church building people, the, the greeters and things like this, um, the, to, to notice suspicious activity. God can't protect your church anymore. The government has to be there because it's a government institu institution. I proved it years ago. You go under I IRS code section 501c3 for tax-exempt churches. And the government, as part of that, they get the building. That's what it is. I've showed the proof over the years. These adversaries sometimes identify houses of worship, worship as targets of opportunity given their rel relative ease of access. Keeping these facilities secure while sustaining the open and welcoming environment necessary for peaceful congregation requires a holistic approach to security. <laughs> Give me a break. All houses of worship support personnel uh, can contribute greatly to enhancing security by understanding how to identify behavioral indicators and taking precautionary actions to safely mitigate the impacts of a potential attack. Unreal. Used effectively, the right words can be a powerful tool. Simply saying hello can prompt a casual conversation with a new person, providing an opportunity to observe and establish a connection. The OHNO approach, observe, initiate a hello, navigate the risk, and obtain help, enables staff to observe and evaluate suspicious behaviors, empowering them to lower risk and obtain help when necessary. Okay, you won't believe some of the stuff in this thing. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly here. You know, be vigilant of your surroundings. Acknowledging a risk can def deter a potential threat. Determine if observed behavior is threatening or suspicious. Obtain help from management or authorities. The OHNO approach descri describes activities and behaviors that may be suspicious or indicative of criminal activity. These activities may be constitutionally protected and should be reported only when there are articulable facts to support a rational conclusion that the behavior is suspicious. Do not report based solely on protected activities, race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, or a combination of only such factors. Okay. But here's, here's where the good stuff comes in at. Okay. Behavior here. Observe. To improve overall security and detect potential threats, staff should be aware of their surroundings and consciously observe and assess others. Getting people in church buildings to spy on one another. Church staff should be watching you. You walk into one of these stinking buildings in the future, and they're going to be keeping an eye on you and watching you and documenting things. I kid you not, they say to do it. While the considerations below are not necessarily in the indications of malicious intent, within appropriate context, they can help identify suspicious behavior. Behavior. If, is the person appearing to study security measures in the house of worship? Do they seem to be trying to avoid a camera? Uh, yeah, maybe there are people that don't like to be on camera and how will their security cameras? Hey, I, I don't really don't like that. That's kind of weird. I mean, New Testament, New Testament, uh, we're supposed to have security cameras and monitor people coming in and everything else. 
all are welcome. Just, you know, we'll come on in and we'll record your face. Maybe get some good, you know, if we get enough money for the church, you know, through government grants, we can get the type of cameras that actually do biometric scanning of the face and everything else. Yeah. Has the person left their car idling without uh, apparent reason? Is the person seeming to linger a long time in their vehicle? Yeah, I've seen people that, that will linger in their vehicle. They're praying and whatever else before they go into the, the cult building. I used to do that sometimes myself. I'd get there early and I'd be in the in the you know vehicle and stuff for a long time. Is the per is this person trying to go unnoticed? What if you have a shy person? They're just kind of trying to avoid the crowds and, and whatever else. Unreal. Oh, oh, you look awfully suspicious. You must be a terrorist. You know, welcome to our church and uh, come on in here so we can report you to the government. <laughs> Total Satanism. My goodness. Um, is this person asking about other members or leadership? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. Hey, can I please talk to the pastor? Terrorist, get him! You know. <laughs> Is this person demanding to speak with clergy or house of worship leadership? You don't do that. You go to some church building. You don't want to ask for the pastor. No, don't ever do that. That's suspicious. Is this person repeatedly walking in and out of the service or sanctuary? What if they have a bladder problem? Is this person attempting to get an usher or someone else to leave the sanctuary with them? Yeah, you know, I've seen that happen. People want to talk to an usher or some other person there about getting saved. I've seen them. They actually want to leave. But I guess now, you know, in the future, the church buildings, you go in there and you'll hear the, the doors, you know, oh, lock. And then you'll see the guys at the back with their little notepads and whatever else, you know, and the facial scanning cameras and everything else. You know, <laughs> now is the time to worship. <laughs> Excuse me, you didn't put enough money in the offering plate. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Here, scan my hand. You know. Better don't let it happen again, or you'll be a terrorist. <laughs> um, is this person person uh, behaving as a lookout, nervously glancing out of doors and windows? <laughs> I've preached in pulpits. I've seen people they get nervous. You start to preach on certain things, hitting certain sins, and they get nervous. And they're looking out the window and looking down and whatever. But I guess that's now suspicious. Is this person standing alone or facing the congregation when others are seated? Yeah, don't stand alone inside a church building. That's dangerous. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is this person loitering and not entering the house of worship without reasonable explanation? Uh, maybe like somebody standing outside preaching, trying to get people warned of whatever else. I guess that's terrorism now. Is this person alone or part of a group? Yeah. Yeah is the context here of what this behavior thing is about. Is this person familiar with the house of worship? Do they seem to know where they are going? Is this person familiar to me or anyone in the community? Is this an appropriate time for a new guest to be at the house of worship? Is the congregation meeting for a private versus public event? Is this event advertised? Is the person asking questions about house of worship functions, event schedules, or attendance? <laughs> All suspicious now. Oh, you want questions, do you? Oh, how to be saved. Oh, why? <laughs> Does the person who has entered seem unfamiliar to all other congregants? Uh, yeah, you have to watch out for that. Who's that? I don't know. Probably a terrorist. Is this person behaving in some way that is very inconsistent with the norms of the site? Look out for that one. Uh, is this person wearing unusually inappropriate clothing for the house of worship environment? Um, Sunday best. Oh, yes, you're wearing inappropriate clothing now. I guess you can't walk in if you want to get saved. Is this person wearing military style gear such as tactical gear? Well, technically, no. It's just our, the security guys are here at our church. Yeah. Is this person appearing to conceal something under their clothing? Like it's any of their right to know that. Is this person carrying anything that may seem unusual for the surroundings? And you know, this is the government putting this out for church people. Okay, if you're just tuning in here, it's the government putting this out to train people at houses of worship. And by the way, the definitions of houses of worship are any 501c3 in organization, 
Church of Satan, uh, Jewish synagogue, Muslim mosque, uh, Christian <laughs> church, Catholic church, whatever. House of worship. It's an HOW. Security tips. Encourage each staff member to be observant with pe about people and situations. And it, I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can read this thing for yourself. Um, unless there's a legitimate reason for people to remain in halls, rooms, and offices or stand outside, courteously remind them that the service has started. <laughs> if there is a reason for concern, courteously remind the person that the service has begun. If there's still a clear security concern, stay present until the individual either enters the service or leaves. Boy, that's a welcoming feeling there, isn't it? I mean, I, I can't tell you how many different times when I was going to church buildings and things like that, somebody would be going through some kind of problem, whatever else, and I'd stand outside, stand out in the lobby, whatever else, and talk to them. Sometimes everybody left the church building, and we were outside talking. I was outside talking with people, dealing with people for hours. And they, they used to laugh about it. And they used to say, oh, these young guys, you know, they're, they're really kind of weird and whatever. They're very fervent in the faith and things. Myself and, and a few other young guys that were going there, street preachers and things like that. Liberty Baptist Church in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. But now I guess we'd be terrorists, you know, if you go through the nice little uh, training here. The power of hello guide. So uh, initiate a hello. And there's the things that you're supposed to uh, ask them. Uh, you know, New Testament. New Testament for any of it? Of course not. There isn't anything for this. You know, navigate the risk. You know, um, look at this one here. This is good too. Suspicious activity indicators. Expressed or implied threats to commit acts of violence or destruction. Implied threats. I'm getting so sick and tired of this country. I wish the Lord would just destroy this nation. Oh, no. <laughs> Terrorist. Abusive language that a reasonable person might find threatening. Oh, man. Abusive language. That's threatening. I, I'm feeling, okay, you need to get away from me now. Inappropriate statements about harming others. Statements of be, or behaviors indicated, indicative of, of suicidal or homicidal ideations. Exaggerated or violent gestures. You know, example, given their clenching fists or jaws. Oh, my. Oh, I just did one. Oh, there's another one. Look at that. I'm clenching my fist. Call the government quickly. <laughs> I mean, why would you walk into one of these satanic church buildings? There's not a verse of scripture for them. Especially after what they did in the last two years. They're, they're atheists. They don't believe in God. And I, I pointed this out in one of my sermons. I, Dr. John Berkman. Lost man out in California, chiropractor, natural health guy, whatever else. And he said, he said, these church buildings shut down because of the mandates. And he said, maybe they don't really believe in God. Maybe they're just atheists. A lost man said that. You're still going to a church building. Oh, man. Characteristics of an armed intruder. Movement like touching a presumptive firearm secured at hips or waist. Unusual body movements positioning oneself or moving in a manner to shield a weapon from view. Again, nervous people. I've known people. I knew people that had autism that went to church buildings and they were very, they, you know, they kind of walk in and whatever. Now, now they're suspicious because the government trained me to, you know, investigate them. I left the Baptist church years ago, Mount Zion Baptist Church, Denver, Pennsylvania, because they started doing background checks for Sunday school teachers. Like when you go to get a concealed carry license or whatever, they, yeah, same thing. So going to Liberty Baptist Church, they, they said, hey, would you like to come and sing in a, a men's choir for the, there was a prison ministry thing, you can come and sing a men's choir and, and whatever for the thing. And I said, yeah, sure. And they said, okay, here's a paper. Hand me a paper. I said, what's this? Police background check. I said, huh? To go sing hymns? And I said, hand it back to him. I said, no, not interested. Oh, okay. Well, did it offend you? I said, yes, it did. Actually, that did. I'm not going to go through a police background church to do or check to do something for a church. What is this, a government institution? I was ignorant to 501c3 in, at the time. I mean, I'm not kidding. I sent a letter to Peter Ruckman when he was still alive, Dr. Peter Sturgis Ruckman, Bible Baptist Church, Pensacola, Florida. And I said, they're requiring police background checks up here. Isn't that ridiculous? And you know what? A guy 
from Bible Baptist Bookstore. Can't remember the guy's name. One of them called me and said, we want to print the, like to get your permission to print your letter in our next uh, Bible Baptist bulletin thing or whatever. And he said, but we have to just put a little retraction in there that we don't agree with you on the background check thing because we do it here. Government institutions. And you know, if you're an atheist out there, please understand, don't put me, don't yoke me up with this. There should be separation of church and state. The state has no right to come in to church matters. And true Bible-believing Christians, in the scriptures, they never met in public buildings that were open to all. Never. They would worship in public sometimes, and people might come in and watch and see what they're doing, but that was it. Government institution buildings and things. Anyhow, I get into the thing of obtaining help here. But you got to see the one last part here, which is really funny. Um, invite local police to tour the facility so that they are familiar with the layout of the facility and associated buildings. Provide law enforcement with pl floor plans and access to locked and secured areas. Okay. Can't trust the Lord, I guess, here. But um, incident response plan considerations. Um, and again, here. Crisis situations are uncomfortable to talk about. A communication plan can reduce the chaos of an emergency. Rehearse emergency plans on a regular basis so that everyone knows what to do in the event of the real thing. Shelter in place requires everyone immediately find a room with no windows, no or few windows, and take refuge. All windows, exterior doors, and other openings should be closed and locked. Okay. So some nut would come into the Babel building there and whatever else and run and run and hide. Run, hurry, hide. We have to lock ourselves down to the police can hear. Well, just and it, you know, oh, oh brother, they don't run. Active shooter response best practices. Run. Ah, he's running out of there. Power of the Lord? Are you kidding me? Of course not. Hide. If congregants are unable to get away safely, encourage them to hide. Get out of the assailant's view and stay quiet. S silence all electronic devices. Lock and block doors. Close blinds and turn off the lights. Encourage congregants to spread out or hide separately and stay in place. <laughs> Fight. This one is funny. As last resort, congregants will need to be prepared to defend themselves. Good. Carry firearms, right? No. Commit aggressive actions for ambushing the assailant together with others using makeshift weapons such as chairs, fire extinguishers, scissors, and books, <laughs> which may distract and disarm the assailant. Oh, oh my. Oh. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. There's a guy with a gun. You get away or I'll use these scissors. But see, you see, church buildings are gun-free zones. Most of them out there, especially like the bigger denominations, like the Methodists, I know they are. They are literal gun-free zones. You're not allowed to have a firearm in there. So what choice do you have? Some guy comes in with a gun, says, oh, time to kill a bunch of freaks. And they are freaks that go to these battle buildings. Oh, uh, let me get my scissors. <laughs> Good night. I, I don't even know what to say. Government document. And by the way, they're giving grant money. The Department of Homeland, Homeland Security and FEMA, Federal Emergency Management, Management Agency, they're giving grant money for churches to go through this training. I'm not joking. Resources. Faith-based organizations, house of worship. Employee vigilance, power of hello. CISA, active shooter preparedness resources. There you go. Online training available through FEMA. Remember the uh, clergy response teams where the clergy were supposed to rat on their different people? If you had some guy that's real patriotic or whatever, coming to your little church building. Um, well, you know, just kind of if things get really bad, you just give us his name and his address and we'll take care of the matter there, Pastor. 
Yeah. Right there, you're seeing it. FEMA. Charles Lawson, full of bad attitude, Baptist, and whatever else. I did a video showing the fact that he actually had a FEMA agent standing right there in his in the in the pulpit, talking about give your money to the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. But then Denlinger's the cause. I'm the bad guy because I warn people about stuff like this. But what do you what do you have to hide, Brian? You should be part of a local church fellowship. You should be coming to church, Brian, and all your followers that listen to you, they're forsaking the assembling of themselves with the government officials and, and snitches. And I mean that's forbidden in scripture, I think, somewhere. <laughs> there you go, FEMA zone thing. Federal Emergency Management Agency's Guide for Developing High-Quality Emergency Operations Plans for Houses of Worship. Wow. So there you go. You got this guy here. This, you know, looks, he, he has a collared shirt, but it's funny how they almost make it look like it's a Catholic priest there with a the little white thing there, you know. Welcome to church. What's your name again? Uh, you're acting a little suspicious right now. Um, why don't you come over? Where are you going? Church buildings are satanic. They always have been. They always will be. Um, again, you get into this whole thing. Well, Brian Denlinger's a heretic because he rejects the Trinity. There's no word Trinity in the King James Bible. It's a teaching. It's foreign to scripture. If it's real, then God is an idiot because he forgot to tell him to put it in there. You know, a church buildings. There's nobody going to a, a building and calling it a church in this entire book. But God's an idiot, apparently, again, according to these people, because he just, oh, I forgot. Ah, oh. yeah, Christians in the first century, they had no power. They weren't doing anything really for me. And I had to wait a few hundred years to kind of reveal it to the Catholics, you know, get your church buildings going. And, and then, you know, I waited another over a thousand years to get the Protestant Reformation thing going. And then it, Another couple hundred years till I got the good independent fundamental Baptist churches going. And then we really had something then, boy. That's the God you worship? It, I mean, if you want to go to hell, if you want to, if you want to die and burn in hell and whatever else, find a good local church. Okay? And, may, and maybe even go through the training. That'd be even better. You want to reject the Bible and everything that you know the Bible teaches. Get a good church building. Believe in the Trinity. All that good stuff. Sunday best, 10% tithe. Everything like that. Yeah. Do it. So just a, a real quick, you know, little rant video here thing. Just unreal. Just reading through this document. I. Oh, man. Unreal. Um, so, you know, and, and of course, you know, I... See one of your comments here. Not all trash churches are trash. Okay, I, this whole argument. Well, my church doesn't do it, and I, I have a church, and we don't listen. Here's how the system works. If it's not first and foremost, if it's not supported by the King James Bible, you have no business doing it. Okay, when it comes to worship and whatever, I you know I know there's no Ford trucks in there or Chevy cars or something. Don't get idiotic here. But when it comes to something like church, it's clearly defined in the King James Bible. There's no question. There's no debate what a church is. It's the people. All right. And you can meet in a home. You can meet in a field. You can meet in the mountains, along the ocean, along the lake, wherever you want to. You say, well, can't we meet in the building and call it a church? No, because then you're, you're changing the definition of what a church is. So number one, you're in disobedience to scripture if you have a building called a church. Plain and simple. And then you have the double life that's that comes as a result of that. What I do when I'm in church and what I do when I'm not in church. I've dealt with this stuff for years and years. I've answered all the questions. It's ridiculous. But, you know, oh, well, my church doesn't do it. Okay, let's just assume that for a minute. But what happens when the government takes over? Just finally says, okay, this is the way it's going to be and whatever else and things like they basically did in 2020. Guess what? They all went along with it. Well, we had a church in the middle of nowhere and we have, you know, eight people that go there and we didn't mask up and we didn't do this. and We didn't do that. Well, then you're just useless. Quite frankly. 
And, you know, if you ever get called into a court situation, whatever else, it's going to be collar of law. They're going to say, well, you have a church building. Why didn't you do what all the others have done? You know, are you some kind of an illegal church or something? Oh, well, no, no, no. I've studied the laws. I've studied all the things. I've studied the scriptures. There's no excuse for these church buildings. So whatever. Um, that's going to be it. Uh, just wanted to put that out there. Um, just absolutely disgusting. Again, if you're just tuning in here, this is a government document telling people how to assess risks. Um, the power of hello guide for houses of worship. You go in there, they're going to actually take records of you. So, um, which I don't, let me just see real quick. I, I think I did skip that one part. Um, you know, again, up here, let me just say this. Um, are there any, any uh, unoccupied bags? Are other doors locked that should be open? Well, this unoccupied bags thing. They did that after the whole 9-11 thing. Well, it could be a bomb or something like this. And people were calling all kinds of, you know, Department of Homeland Security for all sorts of things. Some guy left his backpack or some kind of deal or, you know, some of the ridiculous stuff people were doing. That. Paranoia and fear is what it all was. Um, let's see if I can find that one thing. Yeah, here it is. Without documentation, okay, I'll say it this way. Security tips. If an unknown visitor arrives, be polite, engage in conversation, and steer them to a clearly visible seat. <laughs> uh, without documentation, it is very difficult to, provide, to prove an incident occurred. Ensure that staff document every encounter they have with suspicious persons. This information could be used in law enforcement actions or judicial, judicial proceedings. So, yes, make records of the people that are attending. Right there it is. Keep records. Write it down. So enough said. I just wanted to go over that thing real quickly. I will put a link to it in the description of this video. So you can look at this, spread it around. Um, unbelievable. Um, get out of these church buildings, brethren. Um, and quite frankly, anybody going to a church building at this point in time, you're lost. You're lost. There's just no question. Um, after the last two years and all that was going on, yeah, whatever. Uh, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.